A is for any, or the A meaning anything except 1. 1 x squared, you start with the x and the x. All right, what's C in this case? Seven. Negative, negative seven. 7. Their product is negative 42. Now these two numbers, these, the two factors of 42 that you need to list here and here are factors of oops, negative 42 that add to B, that add up to B. B is your middle term. B is 11. What two factors add up? Now keep in mind, if it's negative, the two factors have to be 11 apart from each other. Because one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. When you add them together, you take the difference of the two. So you need to go over here and start listing. 1 and 42 are too far apart. 2 and 21, two we're getting closer. 3 and 3 goes in there. 14, That's it. there we go. Which one has to be negative in order to get a positive 11? Good. You do your signs last. You just figure out, is there any way to combine 3 and 14 to get 11? Yes. 14 minus 3. So that's what you need to put here. You have to be true to the signs. Does it matter when you put negative? It doesn't matter if I put 14 here or here. It doesn't matter. Because you can do it in any order. It'll come out the same. All right, negative 3 and negative 7. What's the only greatest common factor between those two? 1. One and it's going to be negative because you're not allowed any negatives. No negatives in the first column. Woo. That's going to be two. <laughs> okay, so the only way to complete this, this is a magic square where you multiply going across and you multiply going up and it has to be a true statement in both directions. Six times negative seven is negative 42. What times negative one is negative three? Three. 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 What times three is six? Two. Two. 2 times what is 14? Seven. And we'll just check it. 7 times yeah. negative 1 is negative 7. We've done it right. The x's go in the first column, and you read your answer diagonally. Oh, yeah. There's your answer. The answer is 3x plus 7, so it's positive 7, and 2x minus 1. That's as complicated as this is going to get on the factoring side of the exam. How many of those do we have on the exam? Like one or two? No. Yeah, not many. Well, it's uh, not many. You can't find That's why. You can't find a very strong factor to use that. If you, you have to go through the entire list. You're on, this is your fourth on last option. If you, if you find the greatest factor, greatest common factor, you pull that out and then look at what's left over. Then you look at what's left over. Is it only two cases? Could it be a difference of squares? A two terms? Could it be difference of squares? Maybe. Factor that. Could it be a perfect square trinomial? Maybe. Factor that if it is. If it's none of those, you go right to, does it start with x squared? You're going to break it down into two binomials starting with x. If it starts with something other than x squared, like 2x squared, 3x squared, 5x squared, you go to the tic-tac-toe method. Could we go over what, like, perfect square trinomial That's what you just did. Oh. Well, so you got to rewind on that one. I just, um, we, we're going to go on to the, the graphic part. The second part of quadratics is looking at the actual curve and gonna, looking at the roots. Are go we going to have to complete the square method? No. You will not have to use completing the square method, and probably sometimes you do. Wednesday, I'll go through one more example. 